Mono White Girl is really an example of what makes a sport great, right? You buy a horse at a, at a sale for, you know, as far as horses go, not a tremendous amount of money. To have her take you on a journey, become a champion, go through some tough times, and then come back and be able to come back at a high level. Um, there's just not a lot of horses that can do that. And that's what makes this sport so special. Being able to, you know, share with the person who bought the horse, the person who trains the horse, the person who rides the horse, uh, and then a great group of partners. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, this is what this is why we do this, and she's a perfect example of that. Liz Crow had, had been working with Pete Bradley, and we had owned some horses in Pete's stable, and had gotten to know Liz, uh, you know, through that uh, that time period. And she left to go on her own, and we gave her her first order and. Uh, First group of yearlings that Liz bought, I think this was actually the first uh, horse she signed a ticket for. Uh, we were lucky enough to end up with Monomoy Girl. Monomoy Girl is literally building a, a legendary resume. Uh, you know, it's been a long, long time since we've seen a, a Philly mayor that has been so consistent and so dominant, uh, winning numerous grade one wins. Uh, she's, you know, literally competed against the very, very best of her generation. When you look at those PPs and you see first, 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 it's very, very, very unusual to see, you know, that consistency at the highest level like she's been able to maintain for many, many seasons. Mono My Girl's three-year-old year was spectacular. I mean, she she did very little wrong uh, all year and, um, you know, didn't have everything go her way. You know, obviously drew the outside post uh, in the in the Kentucky Oaks, which we thought was going to be pretty difficult for her to, to win from there. Uh, and she just found a way to win, uh, you know, pretty much all year. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a credit to an unbelievable filly and really a, a terrific training job by Brad Cox. Um, and, and, you know, Florent Giroux, who's been on her, you know, pretty much every race of her career has, has just been, you know, magnificent with her uh, from the start. Monomoy girl, Monomoy girl, wonder gets out. Monomoy girl digs down deep and she was dazzling in the Oaks, half length on the wire. The aspect of Monomoy girl that is really intriguing to me is her pedigree. Her half brother, Mr. Monomoy, is a great two stakes winner this year. Uh, was one of the most promising three year olds in the country. The two year old was a, is a TDN rising star. Uh, her damn drumette is young, uh, and, and there's going to be, she was bought by Bridalwood at Phasic Tipton November sale a few years ago, has a mastery yearling on the ground, uh, has a yearling by, or a foal, a foal by Tappet, uh, so you can imagine the kind of stallions that she's going to be bred to in the coming years as well. Her last race is going to be difficult. You know, we've been lucky enough to have a few spectacular fillies um, through through our years doing this, and this was this filly is going to be at the top of that list. You know, for for all the reasons that we've talked about. You know, just you know, being Brad's first Grade One winner, being the first ticket Liz Crow signed, great partnership group that's owned a lot of horses together, and been through the journey with her. Obviously, you know, seeing her fight back from um, you know having a couple of uh, issues throughout over time, and and being able to get back to this high level, it, it's going to be crushing um you know i think going into that day it'll be mostly just nerves on hoping that you know she's able to stay and fire her a race and we'll have a chance to win a breeders cup race that will quickly turn to being pretty sad uh and you know thinking about what it's going to be like to not um, have a filly like this in your stable when you're involved in this sport you're you know you're buying yearlings and you're buying proven horses and you're buying horses from europe and doing what you can to try to you know, find great horses to go to big races. And, um, you know, when the, the horse is at the top of your stable and she's at the top, you know, retire, it's, uh, they're really, really difficult to find a replacement for. And, you know, there's not gonna be one for us.